demonstrate how a search dog works, how the training goes into it, and also give some people a chance to actually buy for her dog and have Max to find you. And over here, we're going to start with a DVD program that has a little story about a seven-year-old little girl named Kelly that gets lost and what decisions she makes that get her lost and what decisions she does to help the search team come find her. We promise you the search team with the dogs, the helicopters, all the people will come find you if you get lost. So that's what our program is today. We're here about safety. We're here about teaching you what to do if you're out in the woods and you separate from your family and get lost and what to do. And the most important thing is, and it's a tool you already all have with you right now, you are going to use your brain. You're going to stop and think and not panic and not get scared. You're going to go, now what did I learn that day at the library, at the Burwick Public Library? What did I learn to do if I get lost and separated from my family out in the woods? Okay? So that's our goal today, to just help you feel comfortable and have enjoyed the woods and what to do if you were to get lost and make good decisions to have everybody help find you. Very much like all of you, Kobach is an impatient boy. He loves to play games. And to dogs, when we go searching, it's a big game. And there is one very important tool that the dogs have, besides their brain, because they learn how to do this and be smart about it. They have a really big tool already built in. Come on. Good boy. And if you look at Kobach, he's a big German Shepherd. What's really big on Kobach? Yell it, yeah. Go ahead and yell it out. What do you think's really big on him? Is it his ear? big ears, right? Yeah. What else does he have that's nose. really big? He's got a really big nose. Yes, he does. Yeah. What about these? Built-in snowshoes, huh? Really big feet. Yeah. So to, to go over the terrain, whether it's the woods and the trees or the snow or whatever, they have to be physically fit and athletic. They have to have good hearing, but the best thing they have is their nose. What we do is we train the dogs to smell, and they smell people. And the beauty of that is everybody smells different. This way. So we have two disciplines in our team. We have two disciplines. We have a dog like Kobach that I unclip his leash, and good thing I have a collar on him, so I don't lose him on my GPS. But I unclip his leash and I tell him to go find someone, and he uses his nose, and the wind brings the smell and the scent, because everyone smells differently, to his nose, and then off he goes to find you, okay? And he also is trained to tell me that he's found you, because what if you were injured, right? And you're way out there, half a mile away from me, and I'm medical help, and I'm trying to get to you, and he comes back to tell me, how do you think he tells me? What does he like to do? Bark. Bark. You are so right. He loves yeah, to bark. Yeah. So what I've done is I've naturally yeah. encouraged him to bark, and he has one really big, loud bark when he finds a person. So we train the dogs to do a, a trained alert to say, I have definitely <laughs> found somebody. Boom. Some dogs jump on you, and you'll see Baxter. He jumps on her to tell her exactly, and he loves to talk, so he's trained to bark. So what we do is we train them to actually locate you. Now, before I get too far into how the search dog works, because a lot of that you're going to see demonstrated by Baxter and Nikki, is we are going to show you a DVD that has Kelly, who's seven years old, and she she's just pretending now. It's just a, it's just a movie, okay? She's not really lost. But what she does is she makes a few mistakes along the way to get further lost and further lost. So I want you to pay attention to the TV movie and tell me what kind of things she did to get further lost. And then after that, she stops and uses her brain. brain. Yes, she does. She doesn't panic. She doesn't get scared. She stops and thinks and she says, what did I learn to do if I got lost? <gasps> There's a few things she learns to do, and then we'll talk about those, and I'll demonstrate some things. We have some handouts to take home of how to have a little fanny pack or a little pack ready to go when you're out in the woods that has all your emergency things you might need, okay? So it's going to be really fun to watch what happens. And then after that, everyone gets a chance to come up and meet Kobach, okay? There's a special way to meet Kobach or any strange dog you don't know, because you don't know if they're going to be really friendly, right? They might be friendly, they might not be, because you've never met this dog before. So we have a demonstration. Sharon, would you like to demonstrate again? On how to meet him? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what we do so is... I we showed you the wrong way. <laughs> Already. So what we do is first you say, ask permission to the person. May I beautiful dog? May I pet your dog? May I pet your dog? And I say yes. Now what you want to do when you approach the dog, and he'll be laying down because it makes him smaller for all of you guys. 
but you want to pet from the side of the dog or the shoulder, okay? Because what happens is if you go over the top like this, are you pokey, pokey, pokey? That's bullying. And we know bullying is bad. And that's bullying to dogs. It makes them a little afraid. Like, who are you? What are you doing? You know, they're not always friendly. They're not always friendly, you know, to have their mouth and hands and everything all over. So you want to be very polite and start petting on the shoulder, okay? And um, so go ahead, Sharon, demonstrate. Yeah. And he gives kisses along the way. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Yeah. No, I know I missed you. Robots know Sherry for a long time. I mean, says you get special kisses. Okay. So before we start, after the movie. Thank you. Thank you. You're brave. You're so good. I went to Thank you. That's good. That's what it's for. But believe me, there's a lot of kisses on my shirt. Good boy. Okay. Well, let's start that movie. You'll get some treats. My name is Kelly, and when I was seven, I got lost in the woods. I had been waiting for our family's camping trip all winter. I love the woods, and Dad told me I'm the best hiker in the family. We got to the campground in the afternoon. The first thing we did was unpack the car. Hey, come on everybody, let's get unpacked. I worked hard to set things up while my brother just sat around and read his comic books. But I didn't care. I wanted to get everything ready as quickly as possible because I was leading the hike to the lake. Just before we left, Mom reminded me to take my fanny pack. Finally, we started walking. It was beautiful in the woods. I ran ahead and pretended I was a ranger leading a hike. Kelly, don't get too far ahead of us. The trees were really tall. I love to look up and see the sunlight coming through the leaves. Along the trail was a big pile of rocks, and I ran over to it and climbed up. It felt like I was on top of a mountain. I heard a noise, and hoping it was a deer, I climbed another rock to get a better look. I love to see animals, and I wondered how many lived in this forest. I looked for places where animals might live and found a bird's nest. I saw a big tree that had fallen down. It had a hole in it, so I looked to see if anybody lived there. Nope, no one home. I walked on top of the log without falling off. Then I stopped and looked around for my parents, but I couldn't see or hear anyone. I hadn't been paying attention to where I was going, and now I had no idea how to get back to the trail. I didn't know which way to walk, and I got scared. I listened really hard, but all I could hear was wind and birds. Mom! Dad! Mom! Dad! Mom! Dad! I called for my mom and dad, but no one answered. I started running, but I tripped and fell and scratched my hand on a sharp rock. While I was brushing off the dirt, I thought about what was happening and I knew I was lost. So I started thinking about what I should do next. 
When the park ranger had come to visit my class at school, he talked about what to do if you were lost in the woods. I knew I had already made one mistake by running when I didn't even know where I was going. I needed to do better. I knew that the most important thing to do was to stay in one place. So I looked around for somewhere else to sit where I wouldn't be hidden and where I'd be comfortable too. I thought of the bird's nest I had seen earlier that day and decided to make myself a nest. A little home that would be warm. I thought more about what the ranger had told me and my friends and remembered the piece of paper I brought home for mom to read. It was a list of things the ranger said a kid should always carry on a hike. Two things that you might carry with you that you might not think you should bring. Those things are a garbage bag and a whistle. The fanny pack! I opened it up and found a whistle. It was easier than yelling, and searchers can hear it better. I blew on the whistle and then stopped to listen. I also hung my bandana on a tree limb, hoping someone would see it. The ranger said that bright colors would help people find me easier. By now, Mom and Dad had probably told someone I was lost, so even though I was scared, I knew that people were looking for me. Hey, hey, right here! Here! Our here, daughter's here, lost here. in the woods! Our daughter's lost in the woods! She was the ranger girl. said that when someone gets lost, lots of people are called to help search, and that they come quickly, even in bad weather or at night. She's seven years old, about four feet tall, blonde hair. Request to have a uh, team come up to do a hasty search. All right, little girl that we're looking for, her name is Kelly Dar. Kelly! The ranger said that helicopters and even search dogs would look for me too. That's why the ranger said to stay in one place and make sure searchers could see me. I knew my parents would be worried, but they wouldn't be mad at me for getting lost. They would be proud of me for remembering what the ranger had said to do. But right now, no one had found me yet, and it was getting dark. I heard thunder far away and got worried that it might start raining. One of the most important I remembered that the ranger said it was important to stay warm and dry. You can use a garbage bag to keep you warm and dry in case you get lost. And Willie, if you come up here, I'll show you how to use this garbage bag. What you want to do is poke a hole in the top of it like this, just big enough for your head, and then put the garbage bag right over you like this. This will help keep you warm and dry at night, in case you have to spend the night out in the woods. The plastic garbage bag. Mom had put one in my fanny pack. I opened the bag, and just like the ranger had taught us, I tore a small hole for my face and pulled the bag over my head. It was easy. In just a few minutes, I felt warmer and I knew I could stay dry in case it rained. I stayed in my nest and blew my whistle every once in a while until I fell asleep. During the night, I woke up twice and listened for the searchers. I didn't hear them, but I did hear some strange, spooky sounds. I remembered the ranger said that none of the animals or bugs would hurt me. And even though it might be a little scary, to just stay in one place, don't run away. The sun woke me up, and almost before I could remember why I was sleeping in a garbage bag in the middle of the woods, I heard something. Voices! I blew my whistle as loud as I could. Someone had found me. Lenny, a search and rescue dog. And right behind him was his owner, Brooke, and another rescuer named Marion. Are you okay? Are you cold? 
boy, was I glad to see them. I told Brooke I was cold, and Marion gave me her coat to wear. Let's take this off and put a warmer jacket on. Here you go. Then Brooke, Marion, and Lenny led me out of the woods. I held on tight to Marion's hand, but when we got to the campground, she let go, and I ran as fast as I could to hug my parents. I even hugged my brother. I'm glad you're back. That night, I remembered to thank my mom for packing my fanny pack with the whistle and garbage bag. Mom started crying and gave me the best and biggest hug in the whole wide world. to come search for you. So we will be looking for you. But you're going to do a few things to help, okay? 
And what were those things? Remember, she had her fanny pack. And she had in there, hmm, let's see, maybe the first thing she remembered she had was a whistle, okay? And if you're a little older and you know how to use a compass, box, you might throw that in there too. But for now, we'll just take that you have a whistle, okay? So, you have a whistle. Now, what are the reasons why you might want a whistle instead of just shouting? Like, you could just, mom, dad, you know, Grammy, right? But after 10 minutes of that, guess what happens? Your voice gets really tired. Your throat gets sore. So when you have a whistle, you can blow that really loud. And you can blow it over and over again. And if you get scared because you're scared of animals or something, you can just keep blowing your whistle and the animals run away. They're like, that's not what's supposed to happen in the woods. So you just keep blowing your whistle, okay? And that way, when you make a lot of noise, it also helps the dogs hear you, the people hear you, and everything too. So you want to make a lot of noise with your whistle. Now, there's another thing that they talk about. You might want to have in your pack I like a bottle of water and a snack. And what happens if I start eating all of these right now? What happens if it's maybe an hour or two before people come? Or maybe a little while or all night? So maybe you want to do like one at a time. Like wait slowly and eat one at a time and your water, okay? So you might want to have those in your pack as well, all right? Now let's see what else might we want to have. We might want to have bright colored things. Let's see, they talked about having something brightly colored. So maybe a, a kerchief or something, um, you know, a, 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 something that might be brightly colored and you're going to want to go up and tie it sort of up as high as you can reach near a tree, okay? So you're going to tie it up there so that you can be seen, all right? Now what's another thing they talked about? Do you remember what else? Because you want to stay warm and you want to stay dry. A trash bag. Look. Hey, somebody remembered to put the bag in my in my backpack. Okay. So now we have a trash bag, and don't worry, all you parents out there, we've made the hole ahead of time. So when you put it in their backpack, in their fanny pack, you make a hole ahead of time. But you don't make holes for the arms, and I'll show you why. Who wants to be a volunteer to put this on? I'm right over here. Stand right here. What? Okay, so when I put this on you, there's already a hole for your head. Okay, we'll do the head first. See? Okay. Now, okay, it's not your turn. It's not your turn. Flats. Flats. So what happens is, we actually don't want a hole for the arms because you're going to stay drier and warmer if you don't have holes for the arms, okay? So you're just going to stay like this, all right? And if it really starts to rain, you can put a little bit on the top like this so it gets your head nice and warm, okay? And you find, are you getting warmer in there? Is it holding your head in, making you warmer? Yeah, it makes you warm really fast, doesn't it? All right, thank you, my volunteer. Good job, woo -hoo! All right, and then the best thing to do is not keep running around and around and around and around and around and around and around, because what the dog has to do is he has to find where you were first and where you were second and where your smell was left here and your smell was left here. You just stay in place. So you're gonna make a little nest. You're gonna kind of take some leaves together, a nice soft place, and a nest. Sometimes they stay at the bottom of a big tree or a nice rock or a big nest, okay? And that's one of your things. I know this is exciting. One of your things. So you have your garbage bag. You've got shown how to use that. And let's see, what else would you need to do? Um, I think we've covered all of the things that warm and dry, bright colors. And one of the reasons why you want to stay warm and dry, okay, is because sometimes as the night comes in and it gets dark and things are starting to drop in the temperature, right, it gets a little cooler. And what we don't want to do is we don't want you to get cold. We don't want you to get wet and get cold. Because that's when things, you can start to feel sick if you get too wet and too cold. So you're going to want your garbage bag or your jacket. If you just have a jacket, you forgot your garbage bag. You just want to stay really warm and dry. That's the biggest thing you can do. Have your whistle and have your things. You might have a flashlight in there. There might be another thing that you might have in there. So those are all really good things to remember and pack. And we have a little handout to take home so that you can get that to your folks and have that little backpack all ready for you, okay? Um, let's see, what were some other things that you thought good about when the, the dog came to find her and the people came to find her and um, she got to go back out and be reunited with her family, right? Because that's the best part. We want you back home with your family, safe, 
okay, in the sound. So that would be what we want to do uh, and have you have the outcome of every time that you might get lost would be you're going to be back home safe with your family. You've got to think about that the whole time. That's what you're thinking about is I'm going to be back home safe with my family. Everything's going to be okay and the search dog team will come find me. And the dogs will all use their really big nose to smell me and find me, okay? So am I going to run around and run around and get all panicked and upset and nervous and, and ah! Am I going to do that? No. I'm going to use my brain and I'm going to sit still. I'm going to make a nice little comfortable nest. I'm going to put all my things on to stay warm and dry. Get my whistle ready right here. And I'm just going to sit and stay right there and wait. Right? And we'll take you home to your family. Okay? All right. So I would like to allow you each to say hello to Kobach and get a chance to meet him and pet him. And um, I want to tell you a little story about Kobach. Kobach is now 10 years old. He might be older than all of you. Is he older than all of you? You're four. Great. And you're five. Okay. Kobach is now 10, but when he was three, he had trained for two years to pass all of his tests. He had to take tests and pass all those tests just so that he could be actually a full certified and that's exciting because apparently his training is also working. <laughs> I forgot. Baxter's training. And that's why you're excited. So um, he had to pass all those tests, and he's been going out searching. So the main search and rescue dog team is a volunteer team. We actually work uh, and will deploy on searches for lost children and lost people for the main warden service. And that's statewide. All of our dogs live with us at home. We train every week, and we go on 20 to 30 searches a year for the main morning service. And we are there to help you and help get you out of the woods safely and get you home to your family. And so we retest and we retest every year. So, yes, very excited. Well, you get to meet the kids. Yeah. Okay. All right. What I'd like to do is right here and here Okay. So go ahead and stick. Don't go around in a circle when you're all done. How's that? Very nice. Good job. Very good job. Yes, you can. Very nice. Very good job. Good job. Yes, you can. Very nice. Good job. Yes, you can. Very good job. Yes, you can. You're always going to remember that about using your brain first, aren't you? Good at answering the question. Yes, you can. Very nice. Isn't he soft? Yeah. He's got a lot of fluffy hair. Can you do it again? You're going to do it again? Okay. Let everybody do it. The parents can do it. Everybody can do it. Yes. Yeah. Is that your dog? Yes. Good job. Yes, you can. Very good. Okay, easy. Yeah. Yes, you can. Very good job. Yes, you can. Everybody can. There you go. Very good. Yes, you can. You can pet him. Yes. Quiet, library voice. Yes, you can. Right ahead. to work already and he's really yeah, excited about doing his job today. And, okay. and, um, so how was the video? Did you guys have a the video? Yeah. Do you, um, when you get lost, do you run through the woods and keep looking for the right way to get home? No. But what do you do? And what if they show Kelly did? She hang a handkerchief in a tree to get some attention? It was a little piece of clothing? Yeah? Do you think that piece of clothing has a lot of your smell on it? Yeah. Yeah. So our dogs can use your stinky piece of clothing to find you. They'll find us find you better, faster.
So, how do these dogs work? Did Elizabeth talk about how these dogs work at all? Okay, so, have you guys ever watched Charlie Brown? Yeah. Do you know the character that has the big giant cloud around him? Yeah, what's his name? Is it Pig Pen? Pig Pen. So you know how that character has that big old character down. down. So you know how he has that big old cloud that floats around him everywhere he goes? That's us. That's what we do. Except for you can't see it like you can on Charlie Brown, right? So when you're walking through the woods, you're leaving your little big pet cloud everywhere you go. And we all do it. Even if you're super clean, it doesn't matter. You leave your little cloud because your skin leaves little clouds everywhere. So you leave a little trail. Follow your little trail that you leave everywhere. So we have two different types of dogs. We have one type that's called tracking dogs, and they'll follow your trail exactly. And then we have another type called air scent, which is Baxter and Kovac, and they sniff all the air, and they find every human in the area, and they're going to tell me about every single one of them. And then we can take inventory, and if it's you, then that's great, and if it's not, we say thanks, and we keep going. Right? All right. So, you guys want to see what some of the equipment is that we use? Okay. So, all of our search dogs wear a special collar. Isn't it neat? Baxter likes his collar. It means he gets to work. Down. So, this is a GPS collar. What do you think that means? Anybody know? Oh, yes. Exactly. So this tells me where he is at all times. So I can watch him on my GPS. There's my little mini computer. And it shows me the whole area that I'm in that I'm going to be searching. And it shows my little dog running all over the place. And it shows me his lines where he's been. So I can see all the places that he's searched. And he shows me patterns. Because what is his patterns? What would you call those? It's clues? So he leaves me clues, and I can see two patterns where he keeps going a certain direction that tells me you might be over there. So, why do you think we have a bell? Anybody else? Go for it. Yeah, so I can follow him. Now, if you happen to be lost and you made your nest in the woods, and you hear this coming along, what would you do? Say there, would you yell? Yeah, yell really loud and say, hey, over here. And the dogs will come and find you faster, or we'll come and find you faster. Or whistle. Or whistle, exactly. So some of our dogs have big bells like this, and a couple of our dogs have beepers. They beep the whole time. All right. Another piece of equipment that we carry is our handy dandy little vest. And on our vest, we have our GPS, so you can watch where you're going. It's our little mini computer. We also have a compass. What do you think we use a compass for? Do you know any, how to use a compass? No? So this. Exactly. It's north, west, south. East. So it helps us navigate across the land when we're in the woods. So we follow our compass and we follow our GPS so we can make sure we cover the whole section of area that the wardens give us to look for you. Alright. Who wants to say hi to Baxter? Yeah? Alrighty. So, I think Elizabeth might have gone over it, but what should you do when you we're going to meet a strange dog. What's the first thing you do? Exactly. You ask permission. Then what should you do if they say yes? Go for it. So you put your hand out and you let them smell you. And Baxter's a licker. He can't hold his liquor. And then you can pet them on the shoulder. Should you ever reach across a dog's head? No. no. Should you hover over the top of a dog? No. No. Not unless you're their mom, right? Back up. 
Okay, should you grab their tail? No. Should you grab their feet? No. Exactly, you guys are so smart. All right. He says, I know where all the treats are. Right in there. Oops. Um, actually, I guess I have to wear this. So. Um, all right. So, should we say quiet and calm when you meet a dog? Or should you scream and yell and jump? What do you think? Say calm. Yeah. Sit, please. Sit. Now, Baxter's young. He's kind of a puppy still, and he's really loud. So if he starts barking, he's not barking to be mean. He's just really excited. Okay? All right. So, we can do one at a time, and you can come up and say hello. You want to start? All right. Anybody allergic to dogs? No. Okay, good. Because he's a licker, and he'll make you itch if you're allergic. He's like, what do you have over there? There's cheese sticks. He says. <laughs> Who else wants to pet the dog? You want it? Go ahead. Yeah, pet you dog. You may. He's a leaner, so he might lean on you. One second, buddy, okay? Good job. Good petting. All right. Now you can You guys want to pet the dog? Yeah. No? Do you want to pet the dog? Can I pet your dog? Can I pet you? Yes, you may. He's going to lick you. He's just like cutter and chubby. Mommy! When you're looking, when the dogs are looking for you guys in the woods, do you think they're looking for clues? Yeah. And they're going to tell me about clues in the woods. So, if you get lost in the woods, and sometimes people get really cold and you get really tired and they drop things. And when they drop things, our dogs will find them and they'll come back and tell us about them. And that tells us, that, that gives us the clue that you've been there. And then we'd know a better area to search for you in. So who wants to drop a clue for me? Do you want to drop a clue? Okay. So here's my t-shirt I had on last night. So it's good and stinky. So you can hold it. Come on over. So what I'm going to have you do is you're going to go for a walk down that aisle way. And then you're just going to drop it along your way and then come around and come back. Okay. So this, here she is. She's going for a walk. She gets tired. She gets hot. Drops her foot. Oh, don't hurt. Good boy. Do you see how he downed over it? Yeah. And he says, I found it right here. And watch. Baxter, show me. You tell me? See that? Good job, buddy. Good boy. Very good. Good job. Can you show me? Yes. Good job. Excellent. Good boy. Come on. That's how he tells me in the middle of the woods that he found somebody. So he can find someone from really far away. And he's going to come running all the way back to me. And he's going to jump and he's going to hit me in the hips. And that's how I know that he found somebody that time. And then he's going to take me all the way back to you. He can find it a really long way. He likes to work by himself. Huh? How far? Can he find me there from three to five hundred feet away? Like the dense woods? And he'll be disappeared and gone. You can't see him. You can hear him. I can watch him on my GPS. And then I can watch him on my GPS. He starts getting closer and closer and closer. And he comes beelining right in. He'll hit you. And you say, okay, show me. And he's like, all right. And he runs all the way back to the person. And did you see how I said, show me? And he came back and he hit me and they went back down again. That was him saying, mom, it's right here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Because he gets his treats. He loves food. So, who wants to hide? You want to hide? Do you want to hide? Do you want to hide? No? Anybody else want to hide? I do. You want to hide? Okay. Um, so, let's, we can do one at a time because we only have a couple. Do you guys want to call Love, come here, love. He's really excited. Okay. So, I'll have you. Down, down. 
down, down, settle, settle, settle. You're all done. All done. All done. Okay. So you want to hide first? Come on.